New Zealand 15 give Ireland A a bit of a schooling in pretty much every aspect of the game. My name's Mark, let's talk rugby. The Ireland A side was mostly inexperienced players, but you did have people like Michael Lowry, Jacob Stockdale, Craig Casey, Gavin Coombs, who've been capped at senior level, and a few caps coming off the bench as well. But generally, it was players who have impressed in the summer tour against the Maori All Blacks or on the Emerging Island tour that went down to South Africa. From the all backs 15 then, we had uh, TJ Panara and Dame McKenzie at halfbacks with over 100 caps between them. But then they also had players like Ruben Love, who was very impressive against the, uh, against the Irish midweek team down in New Zealand as well during the summer. Right from the off, New Zealand showed a lot of regression, line speed. They were disrupting Ireland's rooks and their set pieces. And from Ireland's point of view, they just didn't adapt to the way the referee was refereeing the, the rooks. They didn't resource it at all and give any kind of protection to Craig Casey. So New Zealand were just keep, you know, flooding players in and getting that turnover ball. And like Casey was the captain and saw him a few times looking at the ref as if like, what's going on here? And the referee was telling him like that, you know, what they're doing, he sees as legal, and still Ireland didn't change what their their approach to it at all. And you know, right up until the, the the last five or ten minutes of the game, they were still making the same mistake. And it's not really surprising that you know New Zealand got off to a flyer in this one because they they were just, as I said, they're bringing that aggression, and they were always bending the line and even when Ireland had the had the ball like they were trying to shift the ball but there was mistakes and you were always worried that New Zealand were going to pounce on something finally New Zealand sucked in a lot of Irish defenders they're attacking on the, the left hand side of the pitch they sucked in most of the Irish defense over there and the McKenzie spots a mismatch then on the other wing where Stevenson, who's a pretty tall guy, is up against Casey, who's fairly diminutive. Actually, Casey was so diminutive that I noticed when they were coming out at the start of the game, there was a girl mascot that he was holding hands with that was almost the same size as him. And then when they lined up for the anthems, he'd swapped his mascot with somebody else. I don't know who it was. There was a person standing beside him. So you could get a shorter kid, so you'd actually see his head when the camera was going by. I thought that was a bit funny. But obviously Mackenzie has spotted the mismatch as well. Stevenson's just able to easily catch it above his head. Uh, he goes in for the try, and then McKin Mackenzie pops over the the extras as well. Um Mackenzie, like not just it wasn't just like his pass and stuff, his kicking off the tee was amazing as well. Like I think he, he maybe only missed one. Then New Zealand just keep on bringing it to Ireland and they were dominating territory. And then any possession Ireland had, um, they found it very hard even to get out of their own half. And New Zealand had to pin in their 22. They go for a driving mall. McAllister is at the back. They drive over and Ireland, like when they set to, to defend it, like they're, they're already going backwards. And there's no way that they're going to be able to, to halt them all. And again, it comes back to, you know, that aggression and that step up at this level that a lot of these Irish players have found out like that, you know, you need a lot more than what you'd give, let, in, let's say, in a URC match or against any of their oppositions that have faced up to this point. But New Zealand drive over and it's looking ominous for, for Ireland. Finally, on about 25 minutes, Ireland gets some territory. They get a penalty. They kick it into the New Zealand 22. They've got a line out. New Zealand have already been disrupting their line outs up to this point. Again, New Zealand get a jumper up and, and disrupt. The ball goes over the line out and bounces. There was, there were two Irish players going for it. I think one was, um, Frawley and I'm not sure who the other was. 
was, I think it was one of the centers, but McKenzie just commits to it and he gets the ball, gets the ball before either of those. And then he just breaks out from there. There's, there's hardly any cover back for, for, for Ireland. So he makes good, good distance up almost up to halfway. There's a couple of passes. Then it gets in to, goal area to Ivasis Shek, who just as he's been tackled, just throws the ball kind of behind them and out into space onto the right wing. And he's just trusting that, you know, there's, there's going to be someone there. He's not throwing to anyone. He's just throwing it to the space and trusting that someone will pick it up. And that's what happens. That then leads to New Zealand getting right into the heart of the Irish 22. Ruben Love holds the defence very well, gives the ball then to Stevenson, who steps the last defender. He goes in the corner. You know, it's, it's three tries to to zip at that point, and you just, you know, d- there's no way really you're thinking that Ireland are going to come back in this one, even if they can get a couple of tries that New Zealand just, they, they seem to be able to almost score at will against uh, this Ireland A side. They do go over again. Um, shortly after the the ball kind of pings around a bit and an Irish player almost like drops outside the kind of drops the ball forward into the in goal area while he's running kind of knocks it rather than drops it and then um, Love gets there first to um, to dot it down just before it it goes dead but then play is pulled back because there's a dangerous clear out that the TMO spotted and the referee was asking him to actually review it while play was going on. So the referee, after reviewing it, then deems that Jacobson, um, it was a dangerous clear out from him. He kind of came from the side, dangerous clear out. He gets a yellow. So New Zealand down to 14. And Ireland, like the, the whole time, like they've, they've had some possession. It's not been like all New Zealand. It's just in terms of territory, it's been all New Zealand because New Zealand, have been putting so much pressure on them as well. Ireland they've been trying to move the ball quickly and get it away from the point of contact, but it's always been breaking down through mistakes or just the the amount of pressure that's coming through from the New Zealand 15. But finally, they get one to click just before half time. So there's a nice um, crisp passing move. They're in they're inside the 22. They're from the base of a rook on the left hand side. Casey gets the ball out. Some Nice crisp passing from the backs. Then the ball gets to Prendergast. He offloads then to O'Toole as he's being tackled. O'Toole does the same. He offloads out, out of the tackle as well. The Frawley. And then Frawley gets in under the post. Manages to dot it down. He converts his own try. 19-7 at half time. A little, you know, chink of um, light for for Ireland. And maybe the coaching team thinking at half time, okay, let's try and reset. Let's get ourselves back into the game. That's all blown out of the water in the first 30 seconds of the second half. Ireland kind of, they, they kick the ball down to like from the kickoff. And as happened most of the night, there's no real pressure on the kick from the Irish chaser. So New Zealand are able to gather the ball pretty easily. They move it in their 22. Stevenson gets the ball and he breaks out of his 22, puts on a nice bit of footwork gets himself in behind. He's got plenty of options. He pops the ball off to, to Peronara, who then uh, gives it to Love. Love goes over pretty much under the post. That one's converted as well. And at that stage then, like the game is is done and dusted and it's just about um, how, how many times New Zealand are going to cross, really, I felt from there. Like every time New Zealand broke the line, they seemed to score a try. And there, there, there was... You know, they they were doing so well to stretch the Irish defence that there, there was no scramble or cover defence once they got in behind them. And New Zealand then, they add on another score shortly after. Mackenzie puts Gardner through through a hole. It was kind of a nice delayed pass from from Mackenzie and Gardner just, just steams right through. As he's being tackled then, he offloads to Lamb who gets up into the 22 and then he offloads to Braden Enor, who goes in in the corner. Mackenzie, again, super accurate from out wide with the conversion. And, you know, if there was any doubt about who was going to win the game, like at that point, you know, even the most optimistic 
Irish fan could see that there was no way back. Ireland do then grind out a try after that as the the intensity kind of drops a little bit and people are maybe a little bit tired. It's one of these ones where they're, you know, picking and going close to the line. Finally, then Marky Moore is able to, to get himself over. He was on as a substitute in the front row, but then New Zealand hit back again. So Love puts in a great burst and he gets within a few meters of the Irish line. It's recycled and Lamb goes over in the corner again. Then there's more trouble for Ireland. So again, they're not resourcing their rook properly. New Zealand get the turnover. Gardner goes in. He pinches the ball. The ball was out and there was no Irish players there at all. Like the, I can't remember. He's fair game for, you know, for the opposition to go for. And Ireland just didn't adapt at all through, through the whole game. Jeffrey was very clear on this all night that as soon as the ball was out and he puts his hands on it. Gardner gets his hands on the ball. New Zealand move it into the center. Ioni goes through a big gap again. Irish defense just completely stretched. In behind again, looking so easy every time for New Zealand, and he puts New Ze- uh, he puts sorry McKenzie away under the posts. And in the final minute of the game, then Ireland produce a bit probably yeah easy their their best quality of the game. So Blade is being tackled. He offloads out the tackle to Nash. Nash then flirts with the touchline. They actually have to check, go back and check that his foot wasn't in touch. And as he's being tackled into touch, he flicks the ball kind of behind his back to Prendergast. Prendergast takes it within a few meters of the line. Then it's recycled a couple of times and Deegan Deegan is able to force his way over with a bit of help. Final score is Ireland A-19, New Zealand 1547. You know, we've seen a lot kind of, especially this year, um, a lot of talk as, talk as well about the, you know, the All Blacks maybe not being at the level that, that we've expected them to be in the past. But this New Zealand 15 just shows you that there, there is still huge depth there um, compared to almost any other, other nation. And this is the kind of depth that Ireland want to build. But on this showing, they're a long way away way from that like there's a lot of work for Ireland to do 